Yo, what's going on, Serpa Squad? Tanner here, and I'm back with another Aquascape. This one was inspired by these two pieces of driftwood I found the other week at my parents' house. They had them in the trash of all places. I couldn't get over how awesome they were, so I took them for myself. Prior to using them in the build, I thoroughly sprayed them down to remove loose debris. I also boiled them for a while to ensure they're safe for livestock. Obviously, I can't do this without a tank. I decided to build one with scrap glass. I measured out the pieces and cut them down like usual. I wet down 60 grit sandpaper and buffed out the edges. I rinsed off the debris. Now that the pieces are clean, I can tape off for silicone. I applied 100% silicone to all of the appropriate sections. I assembled the tank accordingly. I smoothed out the silicone on the inside of the tank. I removed the tape and let it sit overnight. I went back and removed the anchoring tape. As I've explained before, I like to build these on cardboard. It makes construction much easier because you can simply cut it off the bottom of the tank like I did here. I attached a piece of window tint film to the back of the tank. I sprayed it down with water and placed the adhesive side over the glass. I squeegeed out the water. Then I cut off the excess. I also put one half inch thick neoprene under the tank to act as a self-leveling mat. What I've created is a 15 gallon rimless tank. Since the driftwood will be the main attraction, I place them first. There's so much detail and texture that it's pretty hard to go wrong with any placement. That said, I knew I wanted a gap between the pieces. I really like how this arrangement creates a path in the middle under the roots. These pieces aren't even close to being waterlogged and will float. To keep them stabilized, I'll attach them to slate. I drilled holes with a masonry bit. I used flathead stainless steel screws to secure them from the underside. These are ideal because they'll sit flush with the stone and won't corrode from being submerged. After that, I put the branches back in their respective locations. The scape is a little different than before, but I like it even better this time around. For the substrate, I'll go with pull filter sand. I thought the color of this sand worked best with the aesthetic I have in mind. I went back and evened it out with my trusty fan brush. I also sprayed it down for better distribution. For the rest of the scape, I'll utilize an assortment of leaves and botanicals. Like the wood, I boiled them prior. I did that so they sink immediately. I think they really bring the natural look full circle and complement the driftwood. I placed some of the larger leaves first to get a base. Then I added the large seed pods. I integrated them within the roots. You figure, in nature, things just fall in the water and get mangled together. Although this is somewhat controlled, that's the idea I have in mind for this scape. Once I liked the placement of those items, I went back and added smaller leaves. These will add a lot of texture. I filled the tank to get a better idea of how things will look. I liked it a lot so far. Now for the fine details. I sprinkled sand over everything to give the look of sediment buildup. This seemed like a good time to add the filter. I don't have a lot of space behind the tank, so I went with an internal filter for this one. I installed it behind the scape on the left side of the tank, where it's mostly hidden. I'll conceal it further with plants. Since I didn't add aqua soil or anything like that, I went completely with epiphytic plants, Anubias to be specific. There's Anubius Nana, Anubius Nana Petite, and Anubius Golden Coin. I removed the plants from the rock wool and split up the rhizomes where I could.
I also trim some of the excessive roots for easier planting and to stimulate new growth. Since they're epiphytes, I can simply wedge them between crevices in the hardscape. I put the larger plants in the background and the smaller ones in the foreground. That concludes the tank setup. All that's left to do now is add the livestock. Prior to that, of course, I dosed the tank with Fritz Turbo Start, which was provided by Fritz. First up are some Nerite Snails. I have four olive and one zebra. As for the fish, I'm going with two types of tetras. First there are a small skull of x-ray tetras. In my opinion, these are the perfect fish for this type of setup. I also have a skull of ember tetras. They're a lot shyer than the x-rays, but they contrast well with them since they're much smaller. I also decided to add a handful of Malaysian trumpet snails. I had some available from a different tank, so I figured why not. There you have it, my latest Blackwater Aquascape. Overall, it's a pretty simple scape, consisting of only a few elements. However, the detail of those pieces makes this an intricate design. The sparse planting on the wood, leaf litter, botanicals, and tannins in the water really add to the look as well. I think materials like these demand a Blackwater setup, and lucky for me, they created that look on their own. I really like the current selection of fish as well. In time, I'll likely add something else once the tank is a little more established. What else do you think could live alongside the current selection? Let me know in the comments. Until then, the fish, snails, and myself will enjoy it as is. That's all for now. As always, I hope you enjoyed the video and learned something new. Until next time, Serpa Squad, take care and peace.